The media query spec became a recommendation 10 years ago. And while it served us really well as we got into the whole responsive web design world, today's web is really built around components. And in that context, media queries are a little bit lacking. But luckily, we now have container queries which solve a lot of the problems that aren't solved with media queries. And we're gonna be deep diving them in today's video. Hello my front end friends and thank you so much for coming to join me for yet another video and if you're new here my name is Kevin and here at my channel I help you fall madly deeply in love with CSS and hopefully by diving into container queries it helps solve some of those frustrations you have with CSS. So let's dive right in and we're actually going to be starting with a really simple example and we're going to move on from there because I want to cover the basics of how container queries are different from media queries then look at them in a bit more of a realistic situation. And of course, some of the problems that can come up, how we can name our containers and why that can be a useful thing as well. And a whole heck of a lot more than that. So um, yeah, let's start by looking right here at the top where I have this really, this super simple example right here. And you can see I have these three dips. So super simple example, three containers in there. And we have this narrow, we have a medium one and we have a wide one, super, super simple. Uh, what I'm going to do is in my dev tools, we're going to turn on responsive mode and that means I can change the size of them and you can see the color is changing. And the reason that is happening is if I jump on over to my CSS and we scroll all the way down, I have some basic styling here where I have this paragraph that is inside of my super simple example and it has a background color on it, which is this uh, orange color, I believe. Yes, which has, let's see what the color is. I think it's like a, there we go. It's this pink color is this one right here. Then when we hit a media query of min width 375, the paragraph gets the background of limes. We can see it changes over. And then here we get the background of orange red when we get to a larger size from there. This is the standard media query way. And the reason I'm starting with media queries is we're familiar with them and we can sort of explore how they're different from container queries and how we have to think about things a little bit differently. So the first thing we need to do if we want to create a container query is we have to create the container itself. And so what I'm going to do is we have these containers right here and I'm going to keep going up because we have my super simple example and the container that is nested inside of there. And what I'm going to do is we're going to come here and we're going to create a container by doing container type. Now you might have seen an older video of mine or you might have seen other blog posts or tutorials that are a little bit older that were on the old spec where it was actually using the contain property and you had to list out the different things that you were containing. That is no longer the case. Now it's container type and there is a container name as well. And uh, we, we can use actually contain to make a container, but we're going to stick with container type because it does a lot of the heavy lifting for us. And we right now have two options for this. It's potentially more in the future, but for now we have size or we have inline size. And inline size is probably the one you want. Now, uh, VS Code's linting here is telling me actually this is an unknown property, but it should work. Or I made a typo, we'll find out in a second. And to see if it worked, I can actually go look in my dev tools. Let's drag this on over and take a look here. And I can see that it did work because Chrome's dev tools, it is actually showing us these are containers here. We'll look a little bit at that a little bit later on and why, you know, how the dev tools can help us out. So container type inline size is making it into a container. And what inline size means is look at the width more or less. Now this could be different if you change your writing mode, but a right to left or a left to right writing mode inline size is our left to right. Uh, whereas a block size would be our top and the bottom. And by doing that, this is a container now. And that means instead of using a media query, I can use the at container. And literally all I have to do is come here and change this over to at container like that. And then at container like that. Let's hit save. And despite the little errors that I'm getting here in VS Code, you can see it's actually working. They're all different colors. And what this is doing, and let, we'll shrink down. We'll see it's smaller sizes. They're all the same color. But as we get bigger, this, this one is changing. They both switched over because they've hit this one here where they're switching to the lime green. And then this biggest size, this is the only one that is hitting this container query right here. And this is really awesome because instead of looking at the viewport like a media query would, it is looking at the container size. So if, again, if we come and look here in our dev tools, it's looking, don't worry about the class, it's looking at this container here. So this paragraph is looking at the size of this. 
and it's always going to look for the nearest container. So even if I came in here and let's just say I added a, another div and we just throw this paragraph here. Uh, this is our medium one. So we throw it inside of an extra div. It's still going to work exactly the same way. It's not looking at this div. It's looking at its nearest container, which is this div right here, which actually is a container. And you might be wondering what if there is no container that is uh, available. So let's go take a look. Let's turn off my inline size right now and hit save. And you can see they're all just going to purple because they're going, well, there is no container. And because there's no container, it's just going to the default styling that I have right here. So this is a lot like a media query where you might write a whole bunch of default styles. And then in the media query, you'll add some different styling based on what you need for that media query. Same thing here. You do your default styling and then inside the container query in different situations, you can write code that will change as things are in different situations. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to zoom out on my dev tools a bit to get that a bit smaller at the top. But let's move down to something that might be a bit more of a realistic. And we're actually, we're going to skip over this example and we're going to come down to this one down here, which is, I think, where things get a bit more real world <laughs> and where it might be a little bit more interesting. And it's this idea where, let's go over to my HTML. And what we have here is this main section. And actually, it's this right here. We have my content sidebar is what we're looking at. And the content sidebar has two things in it. We have an article and we have our aside right here. So the article is this part on the left and the aside is the sidebar on the right. And if I shrink this down, they stack, right? So we have this stacking like that. But at the larger screen sizes, the sidebar shoots off to the side. So a very common design pattern that you might see. And the issue that's happening here with this thing on the side is I've created a div called call to action or right here. I'm using the same class here as I am right here. And because it's the same class, let's go take a look at what's happening. I'm using a traditional media query for this. And my media query is saying with a width of 50 M, it's basically when we're forcing things to become two columns. That is working perfectly fine here. So let's shrink this down actually. It means we have this two column layout. So we have the text in our button and that's all fine. And then at one point, when we get to a small enough screen size, everything stacks. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's a nice behavior if you're worried about the viewport. But that's the issue that we run into is components don't necessarily look at the viewport because the same component is being used in two places. And this, you know, the viewport is irrelevant to what's happening in the sidebar here. And this is where you might be left having to create like modifier classes or different things that will change how something might work depending on the situation where you're using it. And then that means you have to keep track of where you're going to be using it. But with a container query, we do not have to do that. So this is, as I said, my content sidebar. And I think the easiest way to do this is, again, you have to think I have to create a container. So how am I going to create containers or what should my containers be? So in this case, I think my aside should be a container and my article should be a container. That makes the most sense to me because I have a call to action in my article and I have a call to action in my with my primary sidebar or my aside right here. And the way I see this working actually is my content sidebar will always have two um, two items in it because the whole point of this design pattern is to create two column layout. So and actually let's put this after the media query. So my um, content sidebar and we can just select all the direct children because we know they'll always be two uh, as long as this is being used in an appropriate way. And so if I select both of those, we can say that the uh, this is a container type of inline size. And if you're wondering about the size one, we're going to circle back to it. But most of the time you will be using the inline size. And so by doing that, these have both been turned into containers now. And then what we can do, let's scroll up a little bit to my call to action media query. I'm going to switch this over and instead of being a media query, we switch that over to a container query, hit save. Look, it's already changed. And now instead of worrying about the viewport, I'm worried about where this component looks good or where things break for this individual component. So maybe I decide, you know what, at, let's just look at it here. Like around 700 pixels is where I think things might, you know, not be so great. So let's just throw a 700 pixels in there. So bigger than 700 pixels, they're stacked, but then they will, or not stacked, they're next to each other and then they stack. But that means when we get over to here, oh, it stacks again because it's kind of narrow and this one's stacking. But if we allow this to get wide enough, at one point, this goes back to being two columns because it has enough room, but this one is staying stacked right over here. 
This is amazing. And just this by itself with nothing else is, in my opinion, kind of bonkers. And I'm so happy that we have this. <laughs> um, but there's more that we can do than just this. Let's just shrink this down and fix my windows here for a sec. Uh, so another thing that we can do, first of all, is instead of using min width, um, part of the media query syntax is actually changing or we're getting new media query syntax with range syntax. The browser support for that isn't perfect yet, but it, with container queries, this is part of the spec and we can actually use it today. Um, so instead of saying a min width, which is 700 pixels and bigger, I can actually say width is greater than 700 pixels and hit save. And it's going to work perfectly fine. As you can see there, uh, it's working just like we had it working before. Uh, of course, you could do it the other way around where you could say if the width is less than <laughs> and I could break everything. Uh, I could also say greater than and equal to. And because we are focused in this case on my inline size for the container type, we could actually say instead of width here, we could put that as inline size two to be consistent. And that would also work. So we do have the logical properties that can come here. And this is just a little bit more readable, especially for people coming from other languages other than CSS. Um, this might be a, a nice welcome change that we can use. Now, another thing that we can do, as I mentioned, is named containers. And that's where things get a little interesting too. And so to be able to take advantage of that, let's go and here's where my, um, let's go to where I defined my original one, which is my content sidebar. And then I have my primary sidebar here. So the primary sidebar is this right here. It's already getting this container type of inline size just because we're putting it on all the direct children. So I don't need to redeclare it, but let's do it anyway, just so we're really explicit. So inline size. Uh, and then the other one we have, we have container type and then we have container name and we can give it any name we want. So in this case, we'll call it primary sidebar. And why would you want to do something like that? Well, what we could actually do here is at container and then you can put the name. So I can say primary sidebar. So we can create a container query that will only be looking at a specific named container. And that could be useful in different situations. Uh, in this case, it's not the greatest one, but uh, we're going to do it anyway. So here, let's say that the inline size is less than, say, I don't know, 600 pixels. We are going to change our background color. <laughs> I don't know why, but we're going to say that my call to action has a background that is now purple just to show you that it's working. <laughs> so this one is this color, this one is purple. But now if you watch this, well, th this one at the top is never going to change and never be affected by this container query because this container query is only looking at primary sidebar. But if I scroll down and I find this one right here, which is inside the aside, you can see that one is being affected. And I have some more down here, something else we're gonna look at. Uh, and actually that's where we're gonna look at Flexbox and Grid because it's a, there's a trick to doing flexbox and grid and just something you have to think about um, that you might not expect at first. So we're gonna look at that in a second as well. But yeah, with a named container, uh, we could do something like that. Now, again, <laughs> we're changing a background color is the stupidest possible example, though it's the most visual one, but there could be situations where you run into specific sizes in a specific, you know, you have layers of components. If a component is in another component in this very specific situation, maybe you need to style that in a very specific way. And now we have the ability to do that. And that's probably going to get even better once we come, uh, once we have our style, we'll be able to do like style queries as well. And that's going to be absolutely amazing, but we're not there yet. <laughs> but container queries are already pretty amazing um, as they are. So yeah, that's how we can do a named container. Now, instead of writing it out this way, we can also use the shorthand container. And to do that first, you're going to write the name. So primary sidebar forward slash, and then you're going to put in the uh, inline size or the size and hit save. So it's a, this is identical to what I had before. The one thing with this is if you want to skip, you can't really do it um, because say you just want to write container and inline size. Um, you're actually going to see it's going to break over here. And that's because the first property, as you saw, was the name. So we can't, if you're doing the shorthand, you have to provide the name first and then the uh, what it's looking for second. And if I omit that and I just put primary sidebar, it's also not working. So it's just, it is important if you use the shorthand, you do want to declare both of them. And we're going to get to the flexbox and grid thing in a second. It's the same consideration for both of them. But first I want to get to that size instead of the inline size for the container type. And we're going to come up to this area for it. 
And one thing you'll notice, this area has a different background on it. So that area is my hero. So let's scroll up and find that. And the reason I said you probably want to mostly be doing it on the inline size is whatever is, say, let's do it now. We're going to say container type is, I'm just going to write size. And the background is going to sort of disappear a little bit here. See how it, it's gone up and the image is now overflowing out of it. And if I shrink this down, we could even run into lots of overflow issues. And that's happening because of my min height here. And actually, let's take off the min height and we're just going to have the padding and then we run into even more issues right here. Um, and that's because the only thing that's setting a height on this right now is this padding and there's nothing else setting a height. And that's because we've said that the container size or the container type is size, which means that it's looking at both the width and the height of what we're working with. But when we do this, we're actually telling the browser that the size, the layout, and I think it's the style are independent from everything basically. And usually the height, the width of an element is usually not controlled by the children, right? The width of an element is usually uh, controlled just by, it just takes up the full space and it's more the viewport that is defining the width. And that's why with inline size, there's not really any side effect that you'll notice most of the time. There are a couple of times when something might pop up, but when we use size, we're saying that both the width and the height are part, we're looking at both for our container. And the issue with that is we're saying that the children are not defining anything. The height is only going to be coming from somewhere where I'm actually declaring a height. So if I have height auto, well, it's height auto, it's going to zero. And in this case, the padding, it's adding that padding in, but it's not looking at any of the children. Everything are just overflowing out of it. Now there are times where you have a height or maybe a min height like I have here. But again, just having the min height, like I usually do, isn't even enough because there's potential for overflow now. It's going to that min height. It's not paying any attention to the children that are inside of it anymore. So just if you do want to have a container query that's based on the height of something rather than the width of something, you do need the container type of size. And there's a lot of considerations that have to come in on that level because uh, it's looking at the block level and inline, but inline is much easier to work with the block level is much more, there's, there's weirder stuff that will happen. But of course, if you did this, you could base, the, you know, styling based on the height of something. And maybe there's situations where you want to do that, but because it is a little finicky and I think most of the time you're actually going to run into more problems than you're going to solve through it. And maybe you have the perfect use case in your head. So definitely experiment with it. But yeah, most of the time you're probably just going to want to go with the inline size to let the block level just define itself. And it's probably what you want in most use cases. So with that out of the way, let's look at the extra considerations we need to take into account when we're using something like Flexbox or Grid. So if we come and look at my HTML over here, I have this even columns and I have my call to action and I have three of them in here, call to action, call to action, call to action. And this is actually working pretty well. But one thing, if I make this bigger or smaller, whatever's happening, these are always going to be stacked, which is the default style. That's why I want, you know, it's a nice fallback. Put in the default style. Right now, browser support's not perfect. We can have progressive enhancement where you get this layout, but maybe things get fancier if there's more. Um, but these three cards are working perfectly fine. But let's just say in this even columns, for whatever reason, we drop down to one, it's still stacked, even though it's going all the way across. And the reason for that is we haven't declared a container or anything anywhere. So for now, let's just take our even columns and do it on there. So I'm just gonna come all the way down. Let's just come, we'll start something new here because we're gonna delete it anyway. And I say even columns. And on here, I'm gonna say that I have my container type of inline size like we've been doing. And what's happening? What? Why are these ones working, but over here it's not working? And let's let's just, if I shrink that down, oh, here here we had some overflow, but now now they're actually stacking, and now, but now they're not. And there are ways to solve this, but dev tools are always nice, where I can come here and I can actually click on this container guy right there. And what that does is it actually highlights what the main container is and the children of that container and stuff um, that are being affected by it. And you can see the container, it's a little hard to see because of the color scheme we have going on, but the container is all of this right here. And that means that the media query that we created before, that it's changing the size to purple and also the one that's changing, uh, not that one, but this here container query, that's changing the two column to one column. It's not looking at the size of this grid item, it's looking at the size of the grid parent. 
And we don't want that. That sort of falls back into the whole viewport issue we were having in the first place. I want it to look directly at the cell of each one of these. Huh, how can we do that? And the way we can do that is to, instead of doing this, to actually, we have to add a little bit of complexity to our markup for this. So what I'm gonna do is here where I have my even columns, I'm actually going to say div times three and create three empty divs in here. But then my first call to action can go inside that first div. The second call to action can go in the second div. And this one can go right in there. Hopefully I did all that right. And if I hit save, the indentation gets fixed. Everything is okay. Um, so now we have my even columns. There's a div, a div, and a div. So we just get three divs in there and then inside each one of those. So this div is, so these divs right here are the grid items now. Ah, so now we have something that can be the container for these cards. So are these calls to action. So now instead of saying my even columns, I can do with the star. So direct child or just div, whatever it is you want, hit save and that fixes my problem. And here they are still there. And as we shrink that down at one point, they actually uh, go next to each other. And it's different from here because this one has that little bit of padding that's on there. So the size here is different from the size here. So they're adapting at slightly different sizes. And then they shrink down and go that way. And they work as we'd expect them to, where they get the three columns, where we get the two columns inside, and then we get the three columns, or they restack once it goes to three columns. And so again, anytime you have an item that you want to work within a container, you just have to make sure where's the container for it. And sometimes that means adding this extra complexity. And there's Flexbox might even throw you off a little more. Because let's say my even columns right now, let's move all of it down actually. I'm just gonna grab all that, just so we can keep everything in one place to make it a little bit easier to see what's happening. And so here we can put it. Um, so instead of having this be grid, if I go with flex, and then obviously this is doing nothing right now, um, you'll notice they're actually shrinking down to zero. And this is actually the same problem we had when we looked at that hero section where the height was collapsing because these are flex items and they're no longer looking at the content inside that flex item. And a big part of flex is the children defining the widths of things. And that goes out the window if the flex children are containers because the width of it cannot look at the children anymore. So this might happen where they shrink down to zero because they can't look at the content inside. And you go, oh my goodness, the, the flex shrink one is just going, yep, let, let's shrink her down all the way. So for that, then I would actually have to come on here and say even columns uh, and div or star or whatever. We could, I guess we could put, you know, we could place it down here with this one. And there's a lot of different solutions. Let's just do a flex one and that brings it back. And, um, you know, a width 100% or a flex basis 100% could also have the same impact there. But in this case, we're defining the size or in this case, actually, it's more of a flex grow that we're throwing in. But Regardless, we're doing something that's influencing the size of it. Um, so one of those weird little things that sort of could catch you off guard and you'll just be going a little bit crazy with it. So it's really important to understand not only that we're defining the container, but the implications of what that happens. And also when we are defining the container, we're also creating new containment formatting context for layout and other stuff. And that also means no more collapsing margins, a little bit like when we use grid and flex and stuff. So there's a, there's a little side effects that you might not be expecting at first, but understanding and knowing about them means you can actually control things properly. And there's actually more to container queries than what I've covered in this video, but not so much container queries with the at container rule, but there's also container query units and I'm going to be covering that in the video later this week. If you're not yet subscribed and you don't want to miss that video, please do consider subscribing. If you're watching this after that video has already come out, it should be right here for your viewing pleasure. And if you'd like to see why I like doing layouts like this with grid instead of flexbox, there is a video right here. And with that, I'd like to give a very big thank you to my enablers of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Mr. Dave, Patrick, Simon, Steven, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.